falls underground and shoots it up through fractures in the rock and shoots it out as steam water and the water gets up to I think it has to be at least 100 degrees Celsius so that it's boiling and goes If you look at the two drops of the waterfall, you'll notice that they're oriented in completely different directions. How many times have you seen a waterfall like this? It's not very common. The cause of all of this is three separate faults that interact with each other in this one spot. The first fault is pretty obvious. It's helped in creating the gorge that the river flows through. This is a normal fault, meaning the Earth's crust has been stretched apart. There are lots of these all over Iceland. The other two faults are represented by the two tiers of the waterfall. These are strike-slip faults, where blocks of rock are sliding past one another instead of being pulled apart. They intersect with each other to form an X, making the rocks more susceptible to erosion by ice and water. Over time, that erosion has created these two separate drops and a very beautiful waterfall. And it's very beautiful and it's very years ago during at the end of the last ice age I would have been standing underwater because the sea was here and the waterfall was flowing into the ocean off a cliff. The ground was actually put under a lot of pressure during the ice age when the glaciers were covering it so over the last thousands of years the land has decompressed and moved upward and a lot of the water that was here where the sea was has now moved out so the coastline is further out. See how after this cliff everything is flat that's because the ocean is right over there and all of this flat area used to be part of the ocean. So behind me there's a cliff and it's the same cliff that goes along all of these waterfalls and there's different layers of it. You can see where the rock type changes. So there's on the top, there's um, basalt, and that's from the lava flow. Uh, that's the youngest layer. And then the stuff below it, there's a layer of rock that's a little thicker that is called hyaloclastite. So that is the hyaloclastite, and that was from when the lava erupted under the ice sheet. And um, during the last ice age, ice sheets covered the entire country. When the lava erupted, it interacted with the water, so it became explosive and there was a bunch of rock fragments and some ash and steam and it was just very explosive and that caused all of those all that stuff to kind of like meld together in this one big mess of rock and that's why it looks kind of like kind of looks like a conglomerate it's a type of volcanic breccia hyalo comes from the water aspect of the formation so hyaloclastite and clastite is just kind of like another way to say rock and then it turns to the lava flow when the lava actually reached above the ice sheet and started erupting kind of like on top of the ice sheet where it wasn't as explosive. Oh my god! <laughs> this is insane! <laughs> That if you're up there watching, start the show. Say it's over, my 
different steps that happen geologically where as this cliff erodes the arches form and so like the parts in the middle of the cliff will start eroding and form the arch and then the arch will eventually collapse as it erodes continuously from the waves and everything and then that forms sea stacks so it's cool seeing them next to each other and this beach is crazy because it's a black sand beach and you can see so far, like all the way down and then we're about to go to Rainestriara black sand beach, which is the other direction and it goes even further in that direction. Fiora Beach and this was one of the places that I was most excited to see on my Iceland trip because I get to see columnar basalt for the first time. Columnar basalt is really cool because essentially this was a lava flow and as it was cooling it cooled very evenly and formed fractures from the contraction of cooling and I like to think of this like a mud puddle. So when you see a mud puddle as it's drying up the outside the edges of it start cracking more and uh, forming mud cracks and then as the whole puddle dries up, the whole thing is cracked. That's kind of what happened here, where as the lava cooled from the outside in, the fractures kind of started like on opposite ends of the uh, lava blob <laughs> and met each other in the middle until it was like these vertical, parallel to each other cracks. And I know that the lava was flowing horizontally because the cracks always form perpendicular to the way that the lava was flowing and cooling. So sometimes you'll see columnar basalt horizontal instead of vertical and you'll see like the actual hexagonal shape sometimes instead of this like vertical tower formation. So it's really cool, it's really common all over Iceland but I personally have not seen it until now so very excited. to the shallow ocean to the beach but what happens here is that it's more like a really dramatic trip from where we are now on the on land to the ocean it's more like kind of like an underwater cliff so the, the waves are kind of forced to break really quickly as they reach land so that's what happens is that it doesn't look like it because the, you don't see huge waves out at sea but when they 
like break close to shore, that's when they get really big and can really sweep you away. So if you ever come here or anywhere that has sneaker waves, be super careful and follow the guidelines, the safety guidelines. Oh my God. <laughs>